Adam. Okay, Adam. Right, so I'm going to fit these uh, bifold doors. They're uh, 2.1 high and they're three meters wide. They're all going to glide this way. They've just arrived. There's the glass for them. There's the sill. There's the doors. We're going to fit them here. So the first thing you need to do, I'm going to try and give you a detailed, uh, as detailed as much demonstration of how we fit them, um, just so that you can probably use it as reference to do it yourself. So we're going to put the sill down. We need to silicon the sill down as well as fix it down. Obviously, it's rained quite a lot so I'm going to use this heat gun to dry off the sill it's a 30 pound heat gun from tool station silver line it's a piece of crap really but for 30 quid it does the job a 30 pound heat gun from tool station um what I'm going to do is just probably get a bit of blue kitchen roll just to take up most of the water first and then we'll get this dried off and get the sill in Right, so that there now, what I've done basically is just dried that egg of protect there because obviously it was wet, but it's got protective coat on, so it's not wet underneath, it was just wet on the surface. So I've dried it with that heat gun, so now when I put my sill on there, I can bed it on some silicon and um, it'll adhere to that because it's nice and dry now. Right, so the sill's arrived. They make the sill bigger so that you can create lugs, but um, the best way to do when we're doing our cedar finishes to have the sill, the sill, the sill exactly the same width as the uh, door frame. So I'm going to cut it to three meters. I'm going to use the um, the old mitre saw there. The blade's knackered on it anyway, but it's got tungsten tips on, so it'll cut through the aluminium. Um, and I've got another blade there, which we're going to change over when we do the cedar. So what we'll do now, obviously there's going to be some sparks coming off this. So Adam will hold one end for me while I cut it. Right, Adam. So we want to keep it nice and square. He's going to keep it flat at bed for me. I've already pre-marked it. I'm just going to give it a little test cut, just make sure we're all right. There we go. And we are. So that's fine. So what I'm going to do now is whip that through at three meters. So there you go, that's cut through that. I'll just explain the sill to you. Um, so we've got a 190 sill. The reason why we've got a 190 sill is we've got double battens on the front. We want it to sit, we want it to hang over our cedar and we still want to be able to get a fixing on our frame. So there's the sill, it's a 190 sill. It's got a thermal break in it. That's the thermal break there. Um, you can see that it's absolutely solid. So we're going to use that thermal break to fix through to the floor. The thermal break is designed to stop the cold transfer coming from the outside to the inside. So there you go, that's the thermal break. Can you see that there? Right, right I'll just explain the sill to you. There's a hole drilled in the sill there. There's also holes drilled in the sill there. The purpose of that is when your door is fit, rain coming that way, any water that gets in there will go into that well there, go through that hole and come out of that hole there. But this hole of the end, obviously, needs to be sealed up. So by the means of that, we've got these plastic end caps. Now they sit over there. There's a little lip on them, so they sit over lovely. So where I've cut it, I don't know how well Adam can zoom in there. You can just see, I've just scored it down with a Stanley knife just to get the burrs off. Um, but that little ridge there... They're decent quality, so you know you're not going to go wrong with um, Express Bifolds in Leeds.com. So that there will pop on there. But what you need to do now, because obviously any rainwater that fills that sill will then fill there and seep out of here, which is dangerous then filling in your room. So what you need to do then is dam the sill. So you need to literally fill that end of the sill completely with silicon. Like that. So that's completely full with silicon. What I'll do now is put this end cap on. Push that in. There we go. So that's on now. So what I'll do now is I'll get one of these trade wipes, wonder wipes, whatever brand you use. Just clean off any silicon. You want to sort of clean as you go, really. You don't want to be getting silicon all over your frame. So that basically now has dammed the inside of that sill with silicon, so no water will run out of there. The water that goes in it will run through that weep, that axe, 
entry hole there and out the weep hole at the bottom. So what I'll do, I'll do the same on the other end as well, dam the other end, and then the sill then was starting to get ready to level it and fit it. So we've got this off-cut sill section. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna offer my sill section up there. The door frame is 70 mil wide. I've marked the door frame there. So what I've done, I've offered it up because I know that obviously I need my overhang to pass my cedar. That's definitely happening. I also need um, around 80 mil on my reveal. So by the time there's a piece of cedar on there, I'll be able to rip down an 83 mil piece of cedar to butt up to the door frame. So I know that's the right position I want to fix. Also it gives me something to fix to there. So I know I'm good there. That's where I'm going to fit it. So what I've done, I've marked a line there and I've marked a line there. That's how far back um, the frame will sit in. What we're going to do now, um, if you've seen me use my base system before, you'll know that um, it's mill perfect. Now, it is mill perfect, but of course you've got your shoes that are bent over, you've got your nails and that, so there may be some undulations in this floor. So the importance of, the most important thing about fitting bifold doors or French doors, get your sill right, and from there on then it should all fall easy. Um, so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna use a laser on this occasion. Um, you can use a spirit level, it works just as well, it's just this is a little bit more accurate. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work my way along, Adam, you've got to jump in there so you can see the laser on line there. I'm going to work my way along and I can see that's on 54 mil. So that's 54 mil there. I'm going to fix this about every 400, every 400 mil. So I'll just get my marker there and I'll know where my fixing point is. So I'm going to fix there. I'm going to check there now. That's good. That's on 54 mil as well. That's on 54 mil too. So I know I don't have to pack any of these up. That's on 54 mil there as well. That's 53. Adam passed me a green packer there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a packer. I'm going to sit that there. Put my tape measure back on there. No, I'm going wrong bloody way. Right. So it's less there, it's high. So what I'm gonna do now, I know it was a mill out, so I'm gonna put a green packer on each of them. Have another look at this now. So I've got 53 mil, I've got 53 mil, I've got 53 mil, I've got 53 mil, and I've got 53 mil. So I know they're all good. So unless I have to pack these other ones up, then we'll, we'll have a look, we'll have a look over here, see what's happening. So we know that one there is 53, so there's no packer on that one. That one there's 53 too. Now, that one's 52, and that one's 52. So they're my highest points. So what I'm gonna have to do now is, I know that that one there's no packer, that one there is no packer. I'm gonna put two on, they're just bent. What you have to do is just get them flat like that. So what I'll do, I'll just check these now. So I've got 52 mil, 52 mil, 50 mil, take one of them off, 52 mil, so that one's good, 52, 52, and we know that they were 52 anyway, so there's all my, my screw points, there's, there's where I'm going to screw, there's where I'm going to pack as well, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to create a solid line of silicon all the way down, just look over here Adam, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a big bed of it there. We know that that's the back of my sill there. So I'm going to put a solid line all the way down. What I'm going to do with that now is just put a bit of silicon like that. Pop that into the silicon. Then glide over the top with the silicon again. Like I said, you get your sill right, you won't go wrong. Pop that in there like that. Bit of silicon over there. I've been watching some of my videos back and I notice I'm panting a lot. <laughs> like heavy breather. Right, pop that there like that. So I'll just run out of seconds, so I'll just get myself another tube. What you want to do is get yourself a pack of these wonder wipes as well when you're doing these. Because they're a godsend. Right, so I've siliconed the full bit, I've put my packers down. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to offer the sill into place. 
been careful not to scratch it or damage it. Um, so I know that's my good line over there. That's my line over there. So I've sat it on silicon, I'll give it a little squeeze down. Adam, just put your hand on it, just stop it rocking forward. So I'm going to use these four inch screws. I'm going to screw through the thermal brake on top of the packer. If Adam just pops down there, you can just see that silicon. Can, can you see that silicon there, look? See how it's compressing down? And pushed it out. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to make sure that I'm right over there where I am, and I'm good. And I'm going to work my way along. Screwing down through the thermal brake. And I can just see the silicon is just compressing out, which is what we want. We know it's pushed tight to the floor. It's sat on the packer. There. Did you see that? Did you see that come out then? Not going to over compress it because you've got a possibility then of breaking the thermal brake, which obviously isn't what you want. Right, so that's the sill down, right? I know that's level now, so what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to get a bit of roll and I'm just going to clean it off and then if Adam comes over here I'll show you what we're going to do. So. Right, so obviously, you know, you've got, you, you've got your water holes for the water, any rainwater to go in there, but you don't want the water to seep down through these. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a bit of silicon, wet my finger, over the top of each screw, and then we know that no water is going to get down that screw hole and get into your building. Like I say, I'm give it a clean, work its way along. We know now, when I put the level on this, it should be 100% level, and that's the key then to getting your doors working lovely and smooth is to have a nice level sill to go off. I'm going to try and video all of this for you and you can have like a real time sort of how long it takes to fit them and every little step of the procedure I suppose. So... You didn't tell him your trick for not sticking it to the thing. With, with what? Yeah. I did, I just said it. What, yeah. So, <laughs> in case you didn't hear me the first time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to blob me blob of silicon, lick my finger, and then silicon won't stick to your finger then. And just smooth it down over that. And there we go. So we know all them now are protected from any water. Any water that does come in will drop down through them holes and go out the weep holes at the bottom. And of course, won't come out the side of the sill into the room, which is obviously not what we want. We've unwrapped the door, we've had a look at it, it's good, it's going the right way, it's the right height. So what we're going to do, me and Adam are going to offer it up. What I'm going to do first, um, the guy who normally, I'll just a little point, I, I've got a guy who fits the windows for me, he's absolutely fantastic at fitting them, does a brilliant job. Um, the only reason why he's not fitting these is because you obviously want to see a video and he comes and does them on night time for me, so I'm going to fit these myself, but he always fits them. And one of the best things I've seen, because... We lift them up and we're always worried about scratching the sill with the door. And what he does, he just puts a series of one mil packers on like that. And then when you offer the door up, you sit the door onto the packers and then it won't scratch it. And then the packers can be just slid straight out then and the door drops down onto the sill and it's there. It's perfect. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pull them forward just because I've just forgotten to do something and I've just remembered. So what we need to do... 
is that frame's gonna go on there. You see that little upstand, Adam? So the frame's gonna sit on that upstand. So we need a bead of silicon on that upstand. Again, to prevent any ingress coming into the room. What I'm also gonna do is fill the sides there. Will you, can you pop them back? You don't want them touching it. Just one minute, let me just, there we go. Yeah, pop it in now. There? Yeah. So what I'm gonna do, I don't know if I'm still filming that. Just gonna put a line of silicon along there. Again, continuous bead. Make sure there's no water coming into the room. There's a host of different suppliers doing doors and windows. We originally used a different company and their customer service was abysmal, but their product was good. Um, but I couldn't cope with customer service. So then we moved back to Express by Folding Leads, which customer service is fantastic and doors are superior and they are the biggest manufacturer in the company. So obviously we want to be tied in with them. What? In the country, not company. In the, that's what I said, the country? You didn't. They're the biggest suppliers in the company, you said. Express Bifolds are the biggest suppliers in the country. Are we good? Could be some shouting now, boy. Right, so we've got the door in. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just go along and slide the packers out. And make sure that my door isn't... Sticking past the lip, because that's not what we want. It's not me. Well, I ain't touching it. I'm not touching it. Well, you're pulling things out, so it's going to move, isn't it? So, if anybody wants a job, give us a buzz, because Adams don't want his job. Right, you ready? Now it'll drop, right? You ready? Yeah. Got it? Yes. You sure? Right, so what I'm gonna do now is just make sure it's just pushed back. Adam, I've got the door. Lean over and just make sure it's pushed back to that. Let go of the door. Lean over and make sure it's pushed back to that ridge. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Right, now come here. Right, hold it there, balance it. Got it? Yeah. Right. Why would you look for the viewfinder? Right, I'm going to use these wind bags. Um, what, it's a little inflatable bag, basically, um, and it's going to trap the door into position then um, so that Adam can let go of it because he's papping himself. Just make sure, and then you see the middle of it here. Don't let go of it. Of it. Don't let go of it. So we've secured the doors in place with these wind bags there. I think they were £27 for two from Tool Station, or as John likes to call it, Tool Fix and Screw Station. Um, they're, they're like uh, when you have your blood pressure taken, basically. You just pump up the bag, it, it fills the space, it locks it into place, and then you press the little button to release the air as well. Um, so there. And a little bit of kit. Again, seeing the lad who fits the windows used them, so I thought that's the way forward. What we did in the last one, we put blocks of wood each side just to stop the doors falling out. Worked as well. Obviously, it didn't cost 30 quid either, but I mean, going forward, these are the way forward. Um, right, what I'm going to do now, the door's in place. It's back. It's pushed back to the lip on that sill that I was talking about. I'm happy with the location of the bottom of the door. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to open the door, the first door. Because um, it's the first time I've used them wind bags, my faith in them isn't actually that great. Um, Adam tells me they're a multi-million pound company, but they're still not going to pay for the doors when they're broken. Right, so, once again, thermal seal inside. Can you see the thermal seal? There's the thermal seal. It's plastic. That's aluminium. That's aluminium. That's plastic. It's to prevent the coals from transferring through into the room. Oh, that's the theory. You can also see the hole there. That hole then drops through into the thermal seal under below so any water that gets in there in theory will drop through there and run out through the bottom of the sill and you can see the same scenario once again i don't know if you can see that hole there 
them holes are drilled in the bottom of the frame. There you go, look, all the way through. Any water that does manage to get in there will drop through there, into there, into there, and into there. So it's well designed, it's well thought out. Um, they're a great company and obviously supplying a great kit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go along and I'm going to fix these doors down to the frame, make sure it's pulled back. So what I've opted for now is these smaller torque screws. So I'm going to fix the frame down with these four inch torque screws. Uh, they're a good quality screw. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill through the thermal seal, through the other thermal seal and into the floor. What, again, what I'm going to do is not overly compress that. Now, we don't have to silicon them because we've always got those weep holes there anyway. So any, any water that goes through will go through them weep holes. So that will be fine. Um, what I'm doing, if Adam can just come forward with the camera, you can see where I put my original fixings. Now, you don't want to go through and hit your fixing because that's going to cause you no end of problems. So if you just step to the side. <laughs> And then, there we go. So what I'll do now, um, just to save boring you, I'm going to open the door and I'm going to fix the frame all the way along to exactly, just slightly to the left of the situation, the position where I first fixed the sill. We've done, if Adam steps back a little bit, I've opened the doors. Um, they're not fully open. It's just to allow me to get into the sill. This then prevents any weight cantilevering the doors out because obviously we're just holding on them wind bags. But we have just given them a little push test now and they're absolutely solid, so. I think my original lack of faith in the wind bags was ill-founded, so quality bit of kit. So what, what we're using, we're using the cross-line laser. Um, so if you can see that there, that's on his timber there, on his timber stud. So if you follow that line up there, that timber stud is dead plumb. Testament to the quality of our builds, I'd say. So what I'm going to do, um, just freeze. I'm going to get my pencil. I'm going to drop that packer on there like that. And I'm going to mark that there. That distance there then, I know, needs to be that distance. So obviously that door needs to go out considerably. Um, but because I've got my wind bags in, what I'm going to do is just release that one a bit. Tell you what I might do actually, just I'm, I'm just panicking a little bit about these wind bags. Obviously, it does cost a lot of money. Watch your fingers, Adam. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna shut these double doors and leave the leading door open just because I'm cautious, conscious about the full weight of the doors hanging out like that. Right. Right, so obviously we need to go in considerably there. So I'll just release the pressure on this. Which I have done. Send that out like that. Obviously that wind bag over there is pushing the frame this way, which is good. Adam, you're just in front of the laser, mate. No, it's me, isn't it? Sorry, mate, follow you. Right, so there. There we go, look. You see we're on that line now. Can you see that, Adam? Yeah. Yeah, so we know that's dead, right? So what I'll do now, I'm going to get a screw, I'm going to put it through thermal brake. Oh my God, I sound Yorkshire then, didn't I? Put it through thermal brake into timber. The nose. The nose. <laughs> right, but I'm not going to sink it all the way in. So I know that frame now is trapped that way, so it's good that way. So what I can actually do now is release that wind bag. That one's done with for now. And I'm just going to go over here, do exactly the same thing on this one. <laughs> so you can see that one there now. Um, again, if you see that laser on that timber there. Now, <laughs> this is what I keep saying, right? You get your base right, everything else will fall into place. So that timber there is dead plumb. So I'm just going to put that packer on there, mark up that line there. I'm going to offer that up and I can see again, I'm like 15 mil out, so what I'll do now, just release this wind bag ever so slowly. Right, so what is happening now, I've released it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put that wind bag in now. I'm blocking laser every time, aren't I? Right, can you see now? Yeah, so I've put wind bag in, I'm just going to push it over like that. 
and that will then lock that frame into place, which it has done. So what I'll do now, I've got my wind bag tight, I'm just going to pop that in there like that. And we know that now, that them doors are plumb that way. Now what we need to do now is rack them this way, left and right as well, so. What, right, so I put my laser on that, on that right on corner of that frame there, so I'm going to have a look up there now. Um, it just wants to nip in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a series of packers. These are literally plastic window packers. Um, obviously they go up in, mill, in mills, so that's what you want. So what I'm going to look for is I want that to squeeze in a touch. What you want is the minimum amount of packers. So obviously like 10 one mils is not as good as two five mils, you know what I mean? Because the less packers you want the better. So, but you still need to actually reach the amount you want. Right, so that there is too tight, so I'm going to offer that green one up because I know I want to pull the frame across the touch as well. So what I want to do, I'm not far off with that one, so I'll put them in, we'll give it a nip to see how it looks. What I'm going to do, I'm going to... What I'm going to do, I'm going to span the frame, so the pack is actually sticking out the back and the front of the frame. So you can just see now that laser is right on that line there. Can you see it, Adam, at all? Well, I'll put my finger there. Yeah, there, that's yeah. better, isn't it? So you can see now the bottom's on the laser, the top's on the laser, so I know that there is completely solid. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check this on this side again and just make sure that I've not squeezed it over. So I'm 64 mil there. And I'm 64 mil there. So I know that there is absolutely 100% perfect. So what I want to do, I want to get five screws in it. <laughs> Obviously when that door's open, there's a lot of weight on it. So I'm gonna just get my screws started first. If you haven't gone through, you can just see it peeping through there a little bit. And then what I'll do then, I'll work my way up the frame Fit in my packers, make sure I've got the right amount in without actually compressing it back to the wood. So we'll start at the bottom. Like I said, I don't know if I explained that really well. So what, what you want is um, you want the minimum amount of packers for the size required. So the bigger the packer, but basically the better, because like they're more solid than 10 of them together. Um, that's too tight. So like I say, the in mill. Might be just a fraction too tight. It's a bit, a bit of a thing where you have to play around with it till you find that. So that one's too loose, but my eyesight's crap. Is that a two mil, Adam? Three. Three. Well, there you go. Black's two, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. That, that there now is a lovely fit. So what I'm going to do is just slide it in. Make sure that it's near the screw, obviously, because if it's not near the screw, it'll compress the frame. And just squeeze it. I'm just squeezing it onto that thermal barrier, thermal brake, rather, um, but not over-tightening it because you don't want it to break. So, once again, put the right amount of packing in. And just, just nip it up there. So, can you see that line well, Adam, or not? Or... A bit hard to see. A bit hard to see. You can see it, yeah. Right. So anyway, the laser's running true up there. Um, just a bit too tight. It's worth getting this right because your doors then will work perfectly well. If they've been manufactured well. I suppose that's the key thing there because I know... As well as there's been a lot of good ones on the market, there's a lot of crap on the market as well. We only use aluminium. Um, it's far better quality. Obviously the plastic comes summertime when you've got all them three, five doors hanging out with all that weight of glass in. It'll be hanging in your garden and sun will be on plastic and it'll be stretching and next thing you know, 
Game over. <laughs> That's a must Right, so what we're going to do now, we know now. There we go. So as line's running all the way up there, we can take that wind bag out now. So they've come good. I didn't think they would be as good as what they are, but they are. That's solid now, absolutely solid. What we're going to do now is drop back onto this other side of the frame as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to check it again. Put my little packer there. Mark it up. Have a look at the top. There, we're bang on there, so that's good. So what I'll do now is screw this side of the frame up as well. Give Adam his pencil back. Adam might want to show you his new pencil that he's boasting about. Apparently it's the latest thing. Um, right, so I'm going to pack this as well. Again, I don't want to push this frame out. I don't want to push this frame in. So we know it's right that way. What we're going to do now is let's get the laser on that profile there. I'm just looking for, to somewhere to put it on, really, basically. I found the profile on the door on the corner there. So I've just got it sat there. I'll put um, a white pack in there. You can see it back, can't you? You see that? Yeah. It's right on the edge of the profile there. Have a look at that. It's right on the edge of the profile there as well. So what I'll do now, we know we're good there. Obviously, this is the locking side. So we want this to be as perfect as the other side. Let's see if... Um, what, what were they? Free the white? Uh, yes. It's a bit loose, is that? But it's not, it's not quite free, so it's about two and a half. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to... See if I can force a free in and we'll just have to have a look. There we go, that's got it. I have to have a look at it when it's fixed. Right, so I'm, I'm in the thermal break again. I'm going to nip that up. I haven't, can you see it, Adam? I don't know if you can see it. Now. I've just compressed it. You can just see the thermal break. Just compressed it right a little bit. Don't want to actually break it though. So what I'm going to look for now is fixing points. So I'm going to fix through that part of the locking mechanism. I'm going to fix through that part of the locking mechanism. Through that part and then one down there as well and I'll be, that will be sufficient. Right, so that, that one's gone in nice there as well. Once again, just in the middle, it's about two and a half mil. That's probably too tight, so we'll go on two mil on that. We know that what's happening here, we obviously haven't got half a mil packer. So what it might come to, it might just want adjusting that a little bit. Might have to take it out, put it in, depending on how it locks. Now, what I've done there now, I haven't got a long bit. I've just got this stupid bit. So I might have to finish that off with a hand driver because we've either got that stupid bit or that ridiculous long bit. So what I'll have to do now, just find an hand driver and an hand drive in. I've opted for the fin a bit there, which will allow me to get into the locking mechanism cavity. Again, just squeeze that up. I can just see that that's compressed just a little bit, but you don't want to break it if you can get away with it. So, I mean, like I said before, the timbers were plumbed that way and they're plumbed this way because, I know they're plumbed because it's a two mil packer all the way down. So whoever's built this one has done a good job. So Adam has built this one, apparently. Ooh. Ooh. It's got, it's got the four mil at bottom. Warping timber, Adam. Yeah. Well, no, I'm lying. It's got the three mil. So we've gone from two to three. So we're a mil out on that timber on that wall, so. I <laughs> have to deduct his wages for that. Um. I don't know if any of you watched me, me green roof yesterday. Um, seems to have gone down the storm. Nobody slagged me off for it yet anyway. Um. Right, and my final one then. I'm just going to put it in bottom down here. Have a look. There's obviously a little warp in that timber at the bottom, Adam. I'll let you off with that. It was good all the way down on it till one end. So we're good there. So what I'm gonna do now is put my final screw in there. And just compressed it. Not broke it, just compressed it. Right, so 
What we've done now, we've fixed the sill down, we've siliconed it, we've created our water dam to stop any water. We've offered the frame up, we sat the frame on the one mil packers, we put on two mil packers, me and Adam had a little argument about it. Uh, we've made up now though, haven't we Adam? And then what we've done then, we've offered the frame up, we've silicon behind the frame, we've screwed the frame down to the sill through the thermal brake. We used our wind bags to pack it, we've plumbed it, we've wrapped it, we've braced it, we've used packers, it's solid, we're good to go. The only thing we haven't done yet is fix the top. Now, I don't, I'll just shut them like that. I don't know if Adam can see. Can you see that movement? You might have to stand back there. Hold the camera there. I don't, can, can you? I can. Can you see it now? Yeah? yeah? So you can see the movement on the frame. So obviously what we need to do now is get the head of the door right as well. So how are we going to do that? Right, above here we've got a steel beam. Now, whether you've used a timber beam or a steel beam or whatever, um, it still needs fixing one way or another. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shut the door, just lock it into place, and I'm just going to mark on wall where the hinge position is because that's where I'm going to put two fixings. One above that one, one above that one, and that will be solid. So what am I going to do? I've got steel up there. So, with that in mind, we're going to fix it with two... Uh, two tech screws. We did bring them in. Uh, so what I'm going to do for clarity, I put the laser up there. You can't see with the tape measure, so I'm going to offer this white packer up. I'm going to mark it along, just so you can see how I'm doing it on video. What we want is from that distance there to that distance there, and we want that there and there. So what I'll do now, I'll mark that, like so. What I'll do, I'll go to this point, I'll move that across that out there, and there. So I can see it wants to go up just a couple of mil. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get myself a couple of packers. I'm gonna put in enough packers that will allow it to go up a couple of mil. I'll just put them there like that. So they're sat on steel. Get me a little packer, make sure I've got it right way around, which I have. And then I'm gonna offer that up. You need to come this side, where the laser is. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is just push that up there. So it's just, it's just a bit too tight. So what I'm gonna do is take one of them white ones out and replace it with a black one. Put them in there like that. And I'm gonna then get me a little pack of women mark on it, wherever that is. And there, we just offer it up. So that's still not enough. There we go, that's perfect. So what we're gonna use, we're gonna use these roofing tech screws. Um, I don't know if you can see them, Adam, can you? They're 110 mil, they're self drilling, they'll go straight into steel and obviously through thermal brake as well. So, with that in mind, we're drilling through steel. I'm going to put on our safety glasses. There we go, that's solid. What I'll do now is, I'm just gonna check that now and just make sure it's right. Just gonna put my backer back over here and mark it. There, that's bang on. So what we need to do now is do this one over here as well. It's actually it's fractionally low there. We'll push them doors over there, it's just take any weight off that. You can see there, it just, just goes up a touch. So again, We'll look for the right amount of packers. I like I say, you could use your tape measure, but it's just for clarity so you can see it on the video. But there you go. When I push that up now, it's absolutely perfect on that line. So I'll get another roofing tech screw. Again, you're drilling up above your head, above your eyesight, so you've got to watch for little bits of metal coming down in your face. Just squeeze that up, nice and solid. It's on them packers. Just give packers a little pull. They don't want to come out. Right, so we know it's plumb, it's square, and it's right. So, 
With a bit of luck and without any cutting, I'm just going to see if these doors will shut the way they should. Which they do, and they lock as well. Right, so that, all that remains to do now is to fit the glass, which I'm going to show you as well in a minute. Put the magnets on the outside, and of course, we're going to form up the frame as well. But what we'll do, we'll fit the glass first. I'll show you how to tone heal the glass. Um, which is, is as important as getting your sill right the first time. So basically, going and healing. Let me just open them again and make it more explainable to you. Right, turning and healing doors is as important as getting your sill right. So basically, if you think of a gate, a brace on the gate will be pointed diagonally like that. That's the hinge side. So when we put the glass in, we want packers there and packers there, which will then create a diagonal brace, bracing against the hinge side, which will keep that door frame upright. So when that door opens, there's no downward pressure because it's braced off the frame. Again, this door then, that's, if you class that as the frame there, because it's on the hinge, it's on the runners. So this one needs bracing that way. And the leading door, again, because it's on the runners, that's the frame side. So we're gonna brace it, that, um, brace it, tone heel it that way. So just to recap, Toe and heel, toe and heel, toe and heel. And then that will stop them doors sagging. <laughs> Adam's doing a little, little line dance out there. Um, right, so what we're going to do, we're going to lock the doors, shut them, and then we're going to then take these beads out. I'm going to show you how to toe and heel the glass, and then we're going to get it all glazed up. I'll show you putting the beads in. We'll get it formed, and then we'll, that'll be us done. Right, Adam. I'm going to glaze this one, so I'm going to take the beads out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the beads where they've come out from, because when they've been manufactured, if there's a slight discrepancy in it, it's a pain in the ass getting back in. So that one's right. That one's left. That one's top. What I'll do, I'll put top there, and then bottom there. Right. We're towing and kneeling it from that corner. So what I'm going to do, because out of experience, I know that I'm going to sit that on a packer like that. So, I'll get my glass. Right, so I've got my glass. Um, depending on where you get it from, this one's been taped around the edges. Sometimes it's polished, so it's not sharp. Um, but like I said, this has got some kind of like black gaffer tape around it. So I'm gonna take these little red travel block packers off, which stop the glass from scratching each other when they're obviously in transit. I'm gonna look at the sticker here. The sticker says, cause it's argon filled, um, label to inside, so I've got that wrong way around. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swim that one around. It'll normally tell you which side it should go to. I don't know if you can see that there, look. Let's put my hand behind it, is any good? So, it's there, look, label to inside, because it's argon filled and it's got a special coating on one side of the glass. So I'm going to take them stickers off now, because it's ready to go in. Um, a little tip for you, if you leave your stickers on and sun gets on them, it's a right pain to get all sticky stuff off, so just a little bit of mark on glass there, I'll just check that, get that cleared off. So, we know that. So I'm going to offer that one in. The tough and safety glass. So, what you want to do is watch them. If you catch the corner on the floor, it'll ping just like that. You can throw an hammer at it, it won't break. But if you catch the corner on it, it'll ping. Right, so, what I've done, I've dropped it in there. I'm just looking at that seal. I feel it's a bit too low. I'm going to use this plastic glazing shovel. Um, you can pop that under glass. You can wedge it up like that. Move glass, you're not going to break it. So I'm thinking that that's a bit too low. So what I'll do, pop another packer under there like that. Oop, that one's shot out. Don't always go right first time. Right, so I put one packer under, but I want it a little bit higher just so it's sat evenly on that seal. So I'll slide another packer under there, drop it down, it looks good. What I'm gonna do then is even that gap out on that. I can see the seal on the outside and what I'm trying to do, I don't know if you can see it, Adam. I'm trying to even the glass in between the seals. So there's that same amount of seal sticking over both sides. So that, that's no good, that one there. That looks good. Just push it across with that glass wedge. Put that, there we go now. So I push that back so it's sat on them packers now. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the top of the unit and we're going to pop it across like that. So what I've done then, I'm just going to pop a little, that's a little bit too much. So we'll go for, um, go for a grey one. Pop that in there like that and just make sure it's pushed all the way to the top. 
which it, it, it is now. Right, so what I've done now is that glass is sat in that bottom corner. It's on two packers, bottom and side. So it's now floating off that corner because it's packed there. So what I'm going to do now is look to get a packer in the top there, just using my plastic shovel. There we go, that one's nice and tight. So that one's in there now. So I've packed it there, packed it there, I've done the same at that diagonal down there. So all the weight of the door is transferred in the diagonal straight like that. There's no weight of the glass down on there. There's no weight of the glass there. So when it opens, that door then will be pushing down on that, that door frame and prevent it from sagging and dropping. So next step. What I'm gonna do, right, that's my top one, that's my bottom one. So I'm just gonna offer these back into place. There, that, that one's popped in. Sometimes they do, sometimes they do. And what I'm gonna do, just gonna pop a little packer in there, just to keep that in place like that. So just keep my hand on that glass, it don't fall off of it to be honest. Right. Again, top one. There we go, you can hear that clip into place. There, there's no point really in showing you how the clip in because there's different various speeds. If you're using a plastic one, you'll have to hammer it in. Um, if you're using these metal ones, they're, they're going nice and easy, and then you put the seal in with it, so it makes it tight. So you get your two shorter ones in first. Yeah. Right, so we're going to put the, the gaskets in now. Um, I don't know, can you see that, Adam? Yeah? yeah? So what happens is a little ridge on the back of there, the little ridge will sit in there, and then the gasket will slide down behind the glass, and then that part of the glass get, the gasket there will sit at the top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just roughly measure what I need. I'm going to cut it with a pair of nips. The reason why I've got it in a bag, the floor's full of crap. It picks up crap off the floor, little bits of grit, and then when you're sliding it in there, it scratches your glass. So you either put it in a box or pour it in a bag, keep it clean. So what I'm going to do now is put some window cleaner on the glass. Um, it aids in sliding the seals in. So that's slid in lovely there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to slide it just in there like that. Right, so these packers here, right, I've, I've put them in. I'll get that back in there, slide it across there. So I put them packers in. So what's going to happen with them? So what's going to happen with them packers then? Um, they're, they're pushing the bead to where it wants to be, so that it helps the gasket go in. But what you need to do as well is just leave a little, a little loop past there like that. I'll explain that in a minute. And again, I'm going to put. I'm just going to measure that to where I want it. I'm going to cut it with my nips again. So what I'm going to do? I'm push that in there like that. I pushed it in behind that other seal. So what's happened now? My packers are falling out. Simple reason is because the seal's holding it off. But the reason why I put that little loop there like that is there. I'm now going to push that in. It's now put in a longer gasket than required. So when that gasket shrinks back like they do, you're not going to be left with gaps. So I'll just explain that one more time when we do this long one. So again, I'm just going to roughly measure, get more than what I need. Cut it off with my nips. I've got my two packers in. I'm going to spray down some window cleaner, which will aid it sliding in. I'll look at the gasket. There's a little thin bit on the gasket and a big bit. The thin bit goes in there. So what I'll do now, I'll just push that in there like that. Slide it up to meet that other one. There, that's tight up there now. Um, bring it down. Give myself a little loop there. Keep pushing it down. Sometimes they go in lovely, sometimes they don't. If you're struggling and it's really cold, then if you get a bucket of warm water and just leave them sat in a bucket of warm water, then um, they'll, they'll be more pliable and you'll be able to get them in easier. So I'll get that down to where it's going. Then nip it off with nips, push it in. And then once again, I'm gonna push them home. Probably left a little bit too much on that one. But managed to get it in anyway. There you go. And get that one out there. Pop that one in. So there you go. Your seal's in. Um, it's got more than it's required because you left the extra loop. So when it shrinks back, it's going to be fine. Top seal's in, side seal's in. What I'm going to do now is continue to seal these doors up in exactly the same way. And then we'll form them up. And then we'll show you them working. And then that will be job done. Right, so I'm going to put the door magnets on now. Um, 
It's got two purposes. It holds that door back there by means of a magnet in the wind and it also stops that handle from bashing into the frame there as well. So I've fixed one where that's going. I'm just going to draw around the other one now. Got a mark there on there. Get the last little bit out. So we're coming to the end of the doors now. We've gasketed them, we've cleaned them, we've fit them up. I'm now going to form them and then I'll show you them working. So this will be the last thing we do. They've also fit with trickle vents, these doors, which help with condensation in the room. They allow a little bit of air to flow in. And there we go, that's on there like that. I'll now look for the body attached to there. The good quality of these, everything about them. So what'll happen now, when that door opens, that magnet will hold that door back. There you go. And the handle is clear as well. So now I'm going to use this expanding form. Um, I'm going to use a foam gun rather than out of the can. If you've used one out of a can before and the plastic straw, you'll know they're crap and they go everywhere and they just keep coming out. So investing in one of these, I think they're 17 quid. It's well worth the effort, the money rather. I'm going to form it from both sides. That will provide some sort of thermal barrier as well. So you can see the trickle vents there on the inside. We get two fit on these doors. Helps with condensation build up in the room. And what I'll do now. I'll jump outside and I'll do exactly the same on the outside as well. And then I'll show you them working. Right, so there you go. Um, I fit the doors. I'll show you them working now. So, like I've always said before, they're a top quality door. That'll hit the magnet now and stay. There you go, that stayed. There you go. So, because I fit them right and they're true and they're plumb, they glide as effortlessly as that. One finger movement. Just show you that again. So I'll tell you what we did. We dried the Aga Protect first so that the silicon had bond to it. We then fit the 190 sill after we put some packers on so we could level it. We fixed through the thermal brake. We then offered the doors up and we set them on packers. We then used our wind bags and we trapped the door in place. We then fixed the door frame into the door sill through the thermal brake. And I told you about where the water drips out and drips down. We then fit the left leg with packers, we used the laser. We fit the right leg with packers and then we went along and we fit the head to the steel as well. Which means that the doors are true, plumb and square and they glide as effortlessly as that. So there you go, that's your demonstration for how to fit your doors. On the next one I will show you how to fit a window as well. And that's it. Don't forget, I've got build packs for sale on my website at www.awkwardgardenrooms.com. It will show you how to build them in exact the same way that we build them. Um, there's 13 different sizes. Each pack contains enough information to build the size that you require and a full materials list as well. So the £96, pounds, um, that includes VAT. It's a no-brainer the time it will save you. And don't forget, I've got a Facebook group as well, which you're welcome to join as well. There's loads of home builders on there building their own. Some are building to packs, some are doing their own thing, and they're all building them fantastically it's a great little group and it offers loads of information and advice and recommendations okay so i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching please like and subscribe